Hi, this week it was announced that the Biden administration had awarded the city of Holyoke, bueno, Holyoke Gas and Electric, $10 million to replace its gas pipes that have been leaking methane. And then that goes into the ground, that goes up into the air, and that is a whole other climate este, change problem. And uh, on hand was our mayor, Joshua Garcia, as well as our representative, Richie Neal. And this is what they had to say about that. Delighted to be with you to talk about uh, not only this initiative, but some of the other really terrific things that we've gotten done. We live in this sort of a din of conflict now, where conflict permanently dictates what the news cycle looks like. So there's less time to concentrate and focus on the achievements that have actually taken place. And this is a huge one. This is really substantial. The infrastructure bill, $1.2 trillion. I'm grateful to Joe Biden and the administration. The Ways and Means Committee helped to write this. We helped to write the CHIPS Act, USMCA. You go right down the list, retirement savings. We've made these huge improvements for the American family, and yet there's very little attention paid to the substance of achievements. But I suspect it's largely because it's hard for media today with the changes that have taken place because of social media to do context, to actually explain things to people. And I think that that's part of the challenge that we have in front of us all of the time. But for years and years and years, we spoke in Washington about doing an infrastructure bill. I was mayor of a big city. At the time, the 100th largest city in, in America. I knew what aging infrastructure was doing. The housing stock in New England is old because it's wooden. That's one of the challenges. The piping that was put in the ground with these extraordinary engineering feats for water and sewer, they're old. But what happened, in some cases, more than a century ago, it was that investment that was made by that generation, which set us aside for much the rest of the world. What we're attempting to do in the Inflation Reduction Act, and what we're attempting to do in the infrastructure legislation, is to address the ongoing challenge of climate change. But you have to be realistic as to how that's going to be accomplished. And part of it is making sure that we repair the piping that's in the ground so that methane doesn't escape. You're going to see probably next summer, because this year is going to be spent with architects and engineers on the infrastructure bill. And next year, you're going to see a lot of this work going into the ground. So as I noted, for years we talked about infrastructure. Secretary Buttigieg. President Biden and members of Congress. And by the way, on the infrastructure bill, this was bipartisan. The CHIPS bill was bipartisan. The Inflation Reduction Act, not so much bipartisan. In fact, our side did that. But these changes that are taking place, they're really going to improve the lives of the American people. That's what I think we'd like to have some concentration on as opposed to this constant sense that we're in eternal conflict with each other in the American family. So when you look at what's been accomplished here and what this is going to mean for Westfield and Holyoke in particular, it's going to be an effort to repair that old piping to keep the methane from escaping into the atmosphere, further complicating our lives as it relates to climate change. The tax credits, which the Ways and Means Committee wrote into the Inflation Reduction Act are staggering. $369 billion worth of tax credits. And what makes me happy, even as I note the irony, some of those who have denied the science of climate change are applying for the tax credits. And my attitude on that is fine. I'm OK with that, because that takes us in a faster period of transition. So this legislation, I hope, that is in front of us uh, today in terms of implementation, which is the stage that we're now in, it's going to endure to the benefit of all members of the American family. We are going to continue to have a conversation about energy-related issues in America. The reality of that is not going to dissipate. And the country geographically is more divided than it is, I think, about the science. The denial that comes about is because of the transformation that's going to have to take place for some who rely upon the fossils for economic life and growth. But I think the step that's being taken here today by the Department of Transportation, by the Biden administration, and, and yes, the role that Congress played in getting this up and running. It is really hard in Congress when you have a five-seat majority
to do anything. And what we did during those years with that five seat uh, majority, historians are gonna reflect upon favorably, but if the media had a better chance, I think, to do more of, as I noted earlier, the context of how legislative life plays out. It's slow, it's plotting, it's deliberative. And by the way, generally not accomplished on the cable TV shows at night. It's a more substantive, meaningful, some days we, we make some progress, other days, we're slowed, but if you keep your eye on the rhythm of legislating, that's how we get over the goal line. And in fact, as I said earlier, that's how you really change people's lives. Thank you all very much. Well, thank you so much, Congressman. Next up, we'll, we will hear from Mayor Garcia. Hello, everybody. I do want to take a moment to thank the Biden administration, the U.S. Department of Transportation, our friends over at FEMSA, Department of Public Utility, to Utilities, Congressman Neal, Senator Markey, as well as our utility colleagues from Westfield and Wakefield Gas and Electric. Uh, it's an honor to be receiving this news regarding critical investments in Hoyoke's aging infrastructure, along with our executive director of Hoyoke Gas and Electric, Jim LaBelle as well as his dedicated team, which includes HE&E's union representatives. These individuals who tirelessly work to provide reliable energy and maintain public safety will be managing the implementation of these important infrastructure investments. Hoyoke is an urban community of which 77% live in what we call an environmental justice population. This grant award will accelerate HE&E's leak management and infrastructure replacement program in, in an environmental justice neighborhood. I do also want to just recognize my Ward 1 City Councilor, Jenny Rivera, who's also here with us today, of where these uh, projects will take place in Holyoke. This funding is going to allow HG&E to upgrade and modernize legacy pipes that are susceptible to leak due to age while enhancing safety and reducing emissions. On the electric side, HG&E has been recognized as one of a handful of utility na utilities nationwide for its leadership in transforming to a carbon-free energy system by the Smart Electric Power Alliance and is on the 2023 Utility Transformation Leaderboard. HG&E provided 95% carbon-free electricity in 2021 with a significant amount of local hydro and solar generation, as well as battery storage. We recognize that natural gas will play a key role in the transition to a carbon-free future, as it, is, as it currently provides a lower emissions and lower cost solution for our HG&E customers, while other clean heating technologies become more efficient and affordable, and maintaining system integrity is paramount to our community. So I'm extremely grateful to have a public municipal utility and not only, not only provides competitive rates, innovative and sustainability energy solutions, and reliable service, but also a significant catalyst for jobs, clean energy, progress, and economic development. And that's all largely thanks to the incredible staff we have at HE and &E under the leadership of Jim Lavelle, who sits right behind me. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Congressman Neal and other representatives. And we are extremely, extremely grateful for this opportunity to move our city forward. Thanks. Also on hand is Jim Clavel, the general manager of Holyoke Gas and Electric. Uh, the question was, so what is this going to look like in Holyoke? And this is what he said. Um, it'll be just a construction job. You know, we have to dig up the old pipe, get rid of it, and put the new pipe in. So it, it's really just, you know, like pipe replacement. What's it going to be like, you know, the, our streets are going to be closed for a while when we take out the old pipe, put in the new pipe? Yeah, sort of and sometimes, depending on if the pipe's on the side of the road, it may not be a full closure of the street. Um, you know, it may be a partial closure, like one lane. And are these all the pipes that are being replaced, or just the ones that have been identified as? Just the older. Um, we've, we've got about 50 miles of older leak prone assets, that we, so we'll be chipping away for a long time. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.